So I filed bankruptcy when I was in the Marines. It was 1996. After the answer to that question, I just felt, I literally just physically felt my heart drop, putting not only myself at risk, but I was putting my fellow Marines at risk. I asked myself this one question, what life did you sign up for? So on your journey to becoming financially free, there are some major potholes you must avoid in order to become a first generation cash flow millionaire. Now, what are those potholes to avoid? Well, in this episode, I'm gonna teach you how to take that learning curve into a power curve by sharing with you the five major traps you must avoid in order for you to become a first generation cash flow millionaire in this episode of the Seven Fear Squad happening in three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jada. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. Just fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy Matt Paul here, hailing to you from Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And please, let me be frank with you before we even jump into today's episode. I've often said I spent my entire 30s to repay the mistakes of my 20s. And had I done things right, I should be experiencing what I'm enjoying now in my 40s, in my 30s. So why is this important and why should you care? All five mistakes I'll be talking about in this episode are mistakes I've personally made. Why does that matter? I now have the time, the experience, and the application, also known as wisdom, to pass on to you on your journey to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. You'll be watching some short clips as I was interviewed while I did an event in Annapolis, Maryland. Now, if you avoid these five mistakes, my friends, you'll be on a fast track to becoming a millionaire. Without further ado, let's get right into it. Number one, the work-life balance trap. Please do not fall into this trap. My least favorite word is the word balance, when in reality, it's work-life integration. Find ways to include family time throughout your business day. I'm not at all saying that taking time for your family is a mistake, but falling for that guilt from outsiders telling you, man, you need to have balance in your life, falling for that trap is a huge mistake. So here's how I answered when presented the question about work-life balance. Let's check this out. The, the team here, people, people are watching you, right? They're seeing your social media, you're mm -hmm. traveling. I think just mm -hmm. like the last 10 days, you were in the Pacific Northwest, you were yeah. in Boca Raton, you were in Dallas, Texas, yeah. you're all around the world, you're in Virginia now, in, in Maryland, D.C. Yeah. Um, how do you keep balance with being a CDO of the fastest growing financial <laughs> services company? You're a board counsel for a, a team within the company. Yeah. You're a husband, uh -huh. you're a father, you're a son. Like, how do you, when people ask how do you balance it, how do you balance life, work-life balance? I ask myself this one question, what life did you sign up for? Mm, that's deep. You know. I signed up to get it all. Some of you guys say, what do young people say? I want all the smoke? <laughs> you want all the smoke? Hey, there's fire. I mean, if, if you want that millionaire life with, with $15 an hour work ethic, it doesn't happen. It don't work. There is no clock in, clock out. It's wow. when I open my eyes till I close my eyes. Wow. It's, it's uh, paranoia that we're slipping down to Lee's Bolton. It's paranoia that uh, we don't have our licensed agents in it. It's, it's all those different things, right? We get paid to do four things. That's it. We get paid to do four things, no technical, no technical skill required, no college degree required. So when I look at that and, and, and say, here's my alternative, my alternative was stay in the military, stay in the Marine Corps, got to deal with bad guys, bullets, and bombs. <laughs> the one thing I realized about bad guys, bullets, and bombs, they don't care what color skin you got. They don't care what color skin you got. And we all bleed red. Yep. Wow. So, so, that, so when, I, when I'm looking at all these things, I'd rather be doing this, phone calls, dealing with rejection, dealing with chargebacks, dealing with people that quit on you, dealing with people that you think you've got to convince, dealing with people that don't think so much about business and entrepreneurship. I'd rather deal with that than dealing with the alternative, which is, oh, shit, I've got to put my life on the line. Wow. So, so that's my reality. Yep. You know, I know that's not everybody's reality. But the life I signed up for, man, when, it, when you say I want to create generational wealth, it's just not supposed to be generation wealth. <laughs> it stops yeah. with you. It's supposed to be generational. You know, you pass on, you pass on one generation, another generation. Like, I make videos today. I'm like, I'm watching these videos. It's, I have an eerie feeling when I do videos. You know why? Because I'm talking to my kids 100 years from now. Wow. In 2121, my kids, great-grandkids, great-great-grandkids, great-great-great-great-grandkids are watching this stuff. For, forget Ancestry.com. Hello, YouTube. 
<laughs> like they're going to wonder what, what grandpa was thinking about 100 years ago. Wow. What was it like during the pandemic? We haven't faced the pandemic. Think about that. Imagine if there was some form of database where you can go back. How did America deal with the Spanish flu in 1918? Yeah, it wasn't documented. What was the playbook? Yo. So, man, they saw gra Grandpa Matt deal with the pandemic and his company grew by 65%. How? These are the things he was thinking about. Wow. He documented on YouTube. So you see, it's all about the life that you signed up for. If it's the life you signed up for to become a first generation cash flow millionaire, then you can't complain when it's time for you to make sacrifices. Number two, not focusing on your unique abilities. Now, this one will cause you to waste a lot of time and sadly lose a lot of money. What do I mean by unique abilities? Let's check this out. So, I, so I, I'm still involved in it. Yes. I, I, know, I still know how to sell. Yeah. But I didn't realize that that wasn't my unique ability. Mm. So everybody here's got a unique ability. So there's three things. This is number one, skills that you're average at. Okay, I'm so-so, I'm cool. Second one is things that I'm excellent at. Yo, I got this big dog, uh-huh, I got this. And number one is your unique ability that nobody else but you can actually do it. Mm. Okay? Two of those three can be delegated. Of these three things, two of those things, uh, two of those three things I just talked about can be delegated. So in other words, we, Chris, Messina, SOS, we stay in our individual power spot and recruit and hire our excellent skills and our average skills, and they do that because that's their unique ability. And so what happens is you hire and everybody around you, your team, everybody's in their power spot. Mm. That's, the, that's the thought, right? That's yep. the image. You're in your power spot, 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 boom. I mean, you guys said too wide, too deep, we can't be beat. I didn't think about that. You know, I asked, hey, who does chance? Who went to college? <laughs> right? Who went to college? <laughs> right? Who knows this stuff? I don't, I don't know any chance. Wow. Right? I said, hey, who, who can create some chance that makes us stick out and it echoes in, in an audience? Wow. Right? Stop, drop, run a million point base shop. Oh, oh, that's how MSM rolls. That was Mason, right? That was, that was Mason, Mason, right? That was Mason because he was a break dancer he was a perf and he was a performer. Yep. And it feels great that he came up with it. Like, dog, I mean, that's MSM, but I didn't come up with it. You came up with it because it's teamwork. He's in his unique power spot. Wow. He's in his unique ability. Is that how you envision MSM? Everyone's in their power spot. You yeah, got of course. You got I mean, Swazzle. I see you guys in your power spot. You see, keep the main thing the main thing. You must be focused on money-making activities. If it don't make dollars, it don't make sense. By only working in the business versus on the business, you're making a big, big financial mistake. And there's only one path you're headed for on that trap, and that's called burnout. Period. Number three, big financial mistakes. Credit cards, big car notes, racks and racks of debt. Making these type of mistakes, and un unless they're dealt with, can and will compound over time. These type of problems just don't go away. And if you think you're just gonna sweep it under the rug, sadly, they are gonna be too big to eventually handle. Here is a story about how I ran into that type of financial problem. Let's check this out. Well, challenges, what failures in your past have been platforms for a setup for success that have, <laughs> have caused you to grow the most? You, you, you're in the failure, yeah. in the pain, you're like, it's the end of the world, I'm in, I'm in this valley. Yeah. But what, what can you think back to maybe the number one pain you've had in your life where you said, this is the reason why I'm here today? Great question. First one would be financial. So I filed bankruptcy when I was in the Marines. It was 1996. And I was asking the Marines, I said, how do I get out of debt? He goes, call this lady named Susan down the street. She's a lawyer and she'll help you file for bankruptcy. I said, what's bankruptcy? Uh, it's, it's just something to make your debt go away. Cool. Wow. <laughs> cool, right? By the way, never take advice from other broke people, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you can stay broke. Don't take advice from a bankrupt person because you're going to be bankrupt. And then realize my credit for the next five years was just going to be jacked. Sure, she got rid of my debt, but my credit in the next three, four, five years, I'm jacked. And I got to answer that anytime I fill out an application for life insurance. Have you ever filed bankruptcy? Yes. Wow. I've, I've, damn it. How can we just, <laughs> all right, shit. Can, you, can I, it be 10 years back? Uh, it's forever. It's, 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 <laughs> Uh, so, so financial, and then I, I realized that one, and I realized why I filed bankruptcy. I filed bankruptcy for twenty thousand dollars. I mean, to me, that was the world, though, right? Wow. So some of you, and the funny thing is, bro, is we're making thirty thousand a week now. <laughs> you you uh, found BK. For, and, for, and, uh, that's all right, it's, it's crazy. 
And so I learned that I'll never put myself in a financial position again. I got close. I'm not close to think about five because it was never an option after that. But I got close financially, and thank God I went through that twenty thousand dollar problem because I knew, I knew how to deal with a hundred thousand dollar problem. I knew how to do a two hundred thousand dollar problem mm. later on down the road, because I built a muscle for that uh, financially. Because you see, you are a product of your environment. If you constantly surround yourself and hang out and conversate with broke people, guess what? You'll be the next broke one amongst them. We've talked about this many, many times before because money is a language. You can either speak broke knees or you can speak million knees. Speaking broken knees with broke people or million knees with millionaires. Either way, you're gonna surround yourself with people that speak that language and who are very fluent in it. By avoiding this large financial mistake, you'll be well on your journey to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Number four, neglecting your health. This mistake is made by so many. It hit me very early on in my career. There's a huge misconception that you cannot work on your health and on your body while you're in the grind pursuing your financial goals and dreams. That's just flat out wrong. Even with my hectic life traveling from one city to another, I can always find time and including workout, diet, and health no matter what I'm doing, city to city, coast to coast. And thank God, it's changed my life for the better. What are the benefits? Let's check this out. My, my next question is, is big for me. So we were in July, we were in Florida. Mm -hmm. We were in, um, we were at, the, at the board council retreat. Okay. And you're training about your routine and your daily habits and what you do. And you have one about exercise and working out on there, mm -hmm. right? I'm sitting there and watching, I'm saying, okay, I don't work out regularly. I'm grinding, I'm doing this. I don't have time to work out. I'm doing the business, <laughs> I'm grinding, I'm doing the base shop. And I walked away from that event and when I got a personal trainer, it changed my life forever, right? And what would you say to somebody in the crowd here saying, okay, cool, I wanna get my physical life intact. In yeah. like, what, 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 what has it done for you? You're, I've been watching your fitness journey. I mean, you know, you, mm -hmm. you transferred from like being like, I don't know how many, <laughs> you gained some, some weight a bit, right? You, you got gray brown hair, one that increases chest size. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, so what value has that added to your overall business and personal life, um, regular exercise? By the way, Sano, this one makes you unique. You and Chris, you, Chris, you have seen a unique because you hear things once and then you do it. So what he just described was what we call speed of implementation. Most people here, they're going to hear something. Oh, I'm inspired, but they don't do it. Chris has seen when you hear something, they do it. Okay. So, so to answer your question, what has it done? Uh, for me, uh, one of the things that Patrick had advised me to do, because at that time I was maybe 44, 45 years old, he goes, have you gotten an executive physical? I says, no. So he had me do a complete checkout, a blood test, you know, you know um, a cat, um, uh, what do you call those, cat, cat, uh, scan. cat scans, yeah. um, um, uh, what do you call that, uh, ult ultrasound, I was getting an ultrasound, oh, yeah. I, was, I was messing with the doc doctor, hey, uh, is, is, that, is that me, is that the ultrasound? Oh. Is, is it a boy? <laughs> Girl, <laughs> no, they were just making sure there, there's nothing going on with my 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 intestines. There's no wow. you know anything. So they're doing a complete executive physical. I mean, and they you know they said, okay, I, your your blood shows this, your blood shows that. So I didn't know. Like I was going through my physical life with not knowing, and I didn't realize how that affected me from an energy and focus mm. standpoint. And so if I want to outlast people, I got to be able to stick, uh, stick my foot in the ground until the beginning of the morning, until late at night. I got to have the, not only the energy, but the focus and intensity while I got the energy. Otherwise, I'm just going through the motions. Mm, that's so I so, uh, got together with a nutritionist. Uh, your body, by the way, my wife hates it when I say this. And probably all the women in the room will hate me when I say this. But my body type is a type... <laughs> I'm, I'm asking for, for your forgiveness up front. <laughs> but uh, my body type is the type that if I don't eat, I'll quickly lose weight. Wow. Right? Yeah. So it, if, if, if it'll break down my muscle. It'll break down everything before it breaks down the fat. Yep. It'll break down my muscle, store as fat, because my body goes into this weird mode. And, and, yep. and I'll lose mass right away. And I'll lose strength right away. Well, I'm sorry. I'll keep the strength. I'll just lose mass. Yeah. Right? And so, and then it'll start bringing away the fat. And I, di I didn't realize that that's what happened to me when I was in the military. Mm. So I'm there in 110, 120 degree weather. I had very little muscle when I was in the Marines. Very little muscle. We were just skin and bones. Corman, Corman Doc Christmas knows about that. A lot of Marines, we don't, uh, we don't keep a lot of muscle. We just want to be lean, mean, because if you have a lot of muscle and you're out in the field, you're, a high, you're like a high maintenance Marine in the field. Mm. 
Right, you're like you're highly likely for them to do mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. Right? <laughs> right, you got to wake up this big beefy marine. Right, what does? Right, it's worse. They got to carry him too. Like, I ain't carry you, dog. But by the way, you, you look at Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs are the same. But you know, like 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 Hollywood has made a muscular Navy SEAL special. Op- no, if you see, if you saw the guy that murdered, uh, that killed uh, Osama bin Laden, yeah. Robert O'Neill, he looks like an accountant. I mean, yeah. yeah. Rob, if you look at if you look at Robert O'Neill, the guy who assassinated uh, Osama bin Laden. He looks like a CPA. Wow. Right? Like you, the red, red hair. He, look, he, he looks dopey. Right? You, dog, you're a Navy SEAL? You're elite? You're part of SEAL Team 6? You? The wow. elite SEAL team? You? Yeah, that's it. But, uh, you know, that, and, and so the focus, the energy, just, you know, personal uh, confidence, uh, networking with inside the gym, that, that's helped you know, from a physical standpoint. Now, my knees, you know, we felt our knees a couple days ago. <laughs> yes, we right? did. So it, had, had I stayed in the same physical condition, uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't have been asking Bill Corman to open up the old course. I wouldn't have been able to last. Really? Because when I left the military, my two patella tendons, the 40%, both are torn. I still haven't got it operated on. So I have a 40% tear in both my p- patella tendons. All it is is scar tissue right now. Wow. Um, because I don't want to be in a, in a hip to ankle cast for 30 days in one leg, hip to ankle cast in this leg. I was getting out the military. I need to be on my feet. I'm a single dad. I couldn't, I couldn't have 60 days of me being immobile. Wow. The worst part about it, selfishly, I was wondering, how do I, how do I sit down in my toilet and take a shit? <laughs> Forget it, I do it. <laughs> I do. Because I, sm- I, sm- I had a small bathroom. It's not the bathroom we have today. Yeah. Good thing, bro. The bathroom I have today, we're just laughing about it. Um, where's that little shack coming out of uh, Corman's office? So you come out of Corman's office, uh, right off of uh, you know, this little, sh- like you come out of Renard Court. Yeah. You either make a le- left or a right. That street. There's that brown shack, that yeah. house. Oh right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd say it's the, the most haunted house right now in Annapolis, <laughs> Maryland. Right. That was the size of a house, uh, Brickstone in Chicago. And the second floor was three bedrooms, my sister's little closet, my little closet, my parents' closet, wow. and in the bathroom. Our current, our current house right now, our current master bedroom, our master bathroom. Bathroom. The master bathroom has got more plumbing, and, and more 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 plumbing and more square footage than our than our second floor of a house wow. that I grew up in. Plus heated floors. Plus heated floors. I've been there. I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> Feel toasty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Again, your health is your wealth. Making all the money in the world would not matter if you're not around to enjoy it. My CEO mentor Patrick David says these four separators, which is to outwork out strategize, out improve, and number four is to outlast. And I like the outlast because for guys like myself and maybe potentially many of you who are not talented, who are not academically smart or intelligent, you can catch up to a lot of people just by simply outlasting them. However, if you are not focused on your health, your ability to outlast them will be hindered. Number five, marrying the wrong person. I believe this is long-term the most important of them all. I can't tell you how many times for the people we coached and mentored, and even myself personally have gone through this, that all these goals and dreams and aspirations are derailed because somebody chose the wrong boyfriend, the wrong girlfriend, or sadly married the wrong spouse. You know, the worst part is, is especially when children and kids are involved. Here's a clip of a story of how choosing the wrong spouse deeply affected me and affected my kids and how I eventually found my now wife, Sheena Sapala. Let's check this out. Second one is relationship. Um, I remember uh, um, deciding to go through the process of divorce. I remember, I remember getting on the deployment, the helicopters were, were turning. And for some reason I was in a payphone and I asked a question uh, 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 to my now ex and after the answer to that question, I just felt, I literally just physically felt my heart drop. And I'm about to go on a mission. Marines are like, come on, let's go. I'm getting geared up. And I got my mind twisted about what just happened on the phone 30 seconds ago. And I got to get on an actual live mission. Wow. I should have never done it. And I was putting not only myself at risk, but I was putting my fellow Marines at risk. So I knew then and there, uh, uh, from that point, I needed to change the way I approach relationship. It's just not sex. For all the young people here. <laughs> Relationship is about what you do six months after the sex gets old. Because <laughs> you will go, and she has bad breath, he has bad breath. Okay? 
<laughs> right? Um, so it, it's, it's about building a life. And, and nobody ever schooled me on what boyfriend, girlfriend, marriage was like. I just never knew that. I thought it was just hooking up. That wow. was my context of relationship. Who are you, who are you hooking up with? That's it. Without realizing, yo, this is a life you're building with this person. Mm. Yeah. And so I, I, there's some, some it's funny, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewing a writer right now because he's going to be helping me write a book. I'm asking the same questions I asked Sheena when we first started dating. Wow. Right? Because he's about to write a book. Like, if he doesn't believe what I believe in, so true. it's a job to him. Yes. Yeah. Right? It's like, I don't want my wife, right. Yeah. Like, I don't want my wife to be married to me and it's a job to her. I want my wife to be excited to be with me. And I want to be excited to live with her. Wow. You know? And so I wanted to ask all the tough questions up front. How do you feel about God? How do you feel about, you know, the kids in this situation? How do you feel about spanking? How do you feel about timeout? How do you feel about, you know, how do you feel about private school, public school? How do you feel about capitalism? How do you feel about Democrat, Republican? I, so I'm asking my writer all these, all these questions. I'll just ask the tough questions up front. Wow. Well, the first question I asked Sheena when I started dating her, you guys, you guys, you guys heard how I picked up Sheena? I know, I know sales schools now, right? So my pickup line is Sheena. Okay, we're, 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 at, we're at a, uh, we're at a uh, um, Nurses Week, I'm, 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 we're doing an exhibit for other nurses. My, my chiropractor friend is doing a health stress test, I'm doing a financial stress test. Sheena is there, she's a, a, a sales rep for Stryker Medical, she's selling hospital beds. I don't know what she was doing. Anyway, I, I look in her direction, I see Sheena, I'm like, damn, right? So, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> right? Right, like Usher, like Usher song, there goes my baby, right? <laughs> no, this song's, no, no, like, I don't know who she was, right? Anyway, I said, yo, dog, just handle the booth. I got some business to take care of. <laughs> I go over there, and, said, and they were feeding the nurses. I said, excuse me, because I know what she was. Excuse me, miss. She says, uh, would you like to also get some food? She goes, oh, those are just for the nurses. I'm like, oh, so you're not a nurse? She goes, no. I'm like, what do you do? She goes, I sell hospital beds, right? And Sheena, right? I said, I didn't know you sold hospital beds. Oh, interesting. She goes, what do you do? Oh, I, I'm here with a uh, uh, doctor buddy of mine. We're doing, oh, are you a doctor? <laughs> she, she should go dig it raw. <laughs> <laughs> she's, I thought I was qualified. She's qualified. Yeah, like that, yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> so I grabbed them, you know, like high, chiropractors have that, that model, the spine and the skull and, and, the, and the hips. The, the, the little, 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 right? So I grabbed that thing. I said, no, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, but do you like to be manipulated? <laughs> okay. What did she say to so, that? So, so she just like... <laughs> and then her nose flared out, and she just started busting. <laughs> she busted out laughing. I'm like, yes! God. Right? And so for another 30, 45 minutes, we were just in our little bubble. And all the nurses would make comments. Are you guys in your own little bubble here? And you guys got an exhibit to run. <laughs> go, go, check it out, get a brochure. <laughs> well, life's about to change, right? Anyway, that, that's what it's like with, with Sheena, just finding my life partner. We've, we've been uh, inseparable ever since. And she's like the type of girl that I would recharge my phone at 2 o'clock at night because I'm still talking to her on the phone. I could not get off the phone with her. Wow. wow and she'd be always, always asking questions. We're learning for one another. It's, it's, it's similar to this day. Yeah, wow. So you see, choosing the right partner, the right spouse, the right person to date is one of the most important and best decisions you can make in your journey to becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. I can tell you from experience that marrying my now wife, Sheena Sapala, has been one of the biggest boosts to my overall development in my finances, my personal life, and emotional and spiritual life. Please take the time, I implore you, to take the time to really ask questions of the person you're dating considering about marrying and definitely considering having children with because you will be judged by who you choose and it just might hold you back from becoming a first generation cash flow millionaire. Well, there you have it. The five biggest mistakes for you to avoid. If you avoid these, you'll be setting yourself up for potential massive success by building a solid foundation towards financial freedom and changing your last name and family tree forever. If you'd like to dive deeper into this topic, I suggest you watch this video right here, is the one quality that guarantees you will never be a millionaire. And the next video right here is the five gotchas of money to avoid. That being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your follow-ups, your feedback. Drop them in the comment section below. If you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like and follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. 
If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.